Welcome back to 17 on set. As you go through the day, adding things to your cart on whether it's Amazon, Best Buy, Target, any of those websites. Uh, here's something to keep in mind. Today is Give Something Away Day, and joining us to talk more about that is Adria Scarborough. Good morning. Thanks so much. Thank you. Um, okay, so you are from Harmonize Your Space, and yes. uh, you've got a great message that I think we all need to abide by, including myself, <laughs> which is declutter. Mm -hmm. uh, we were talking how sometimes we think about, uh, you know, spring cleaning, you know, those, 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 those times of year, I know a lot of people clean their house after the holidays. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it, it's got to happen like every day, it seems like. I mean, there's yes. always more and more things coming into the house. Uh, we were talking about how you, you know, buy this or that, and then uh, you don't get rid of anything. Right. 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 So, what is kind of your first step in in decluttering? Because sometimes it can seem like such a a hassle and mm. so overwhelming. Like you don't know where to start. Yeah, and and that's normal. Everybody feels that way. I feel that way sometimes. Um, the first major step is you have to consider why it is you want to get organized. Like de-stressing is a huge one and mm. one that I think everybody can relate to, but. You might also have your own personal reasons for wanting to declutter and you really need to keep those in your mind while you're working to prevent that burnout, that overwhelm. And um, that's an important step that you shouldn't skip because otherwise you'll just be like, what's the point? And you'll give up and then it'll just keep going. It, it just kind of almost like it unravels. Like it's just, it's almost like there's the, there's no point, uh, there's the point of no return. Uh, yeah. Tell us a little bit about some of the things that you brought in today. Well, um, that, that brings me to, um, the, like the third step is, is basically how you will uh, store your items. Okay. So. The second step, actually, let's go over that real quick. Um, you actually have to decide how to like how to decide what you want to get rid of. So it needs to fall into two categories: either you love it or you use it. And when you love it, it means it makes you happy when you see it. Mm -hmm. You want to hang on to it because it, it truly brings you joy. It doesn't weigh you down emotionally. And I think we all know what that emotional clutter is in our lives. And the second one about using it is you you actually have to use it. Like if you haven't worn it within two years, if you haven't used it in five, ten years, that's usually a sign you should pass it along to somebody else who right. can it can be a blessing to them right. and get out of your house. So that, that brings me then to the third step, which is how to actually um, store it. Mm -hmm. So um, I brought this because um, you, you generally, as a rule, you want to avoid lids whenever possible, except when you're talking about things that you don't access that often. So this is my memorabilia. Um, you know, I wanted to put it nicely in here so that it would fit in the top of my closet, but generally you don't use this kind of box for everything as some people tend to do. It actually causes more clutter because the harder it is to get to, the harder it is to put away. Right. The lids themselves end up creating clutter. So I recommend items like this okay. whenever possible or just open bins. Mm -hmm. Like I use this for my son's toys because it's easy to drag around the house. It's easy to put away very quickly. Um, I don't use the toy box. Okay, yeah, then sometimes it's good to just have it open because then you also know what's in there and it doesn't have to, it's not, like you close it, you just put it away. Yeah, and know, the so. rest of your family will really appreciate it not being more difficult, right. not being like Fort Knox to put something right, away. You know? Right, right. So, and uh, additionally, you want to avoid stacking and burying things in closets or drawers. Mm -hmm. um, just because a drawer is there doesn't mean it just gets thrown in there. Um, I brought my dishes as an example um, to show you how it can be like with like, but sectioned off individually so that it's they're not stacked on top of each other they're much easier to put away and you can implement this in all kinds of different areas in your house. Really quick, because I, I have to ask you this question before we go, because yeah. we are running out of time. But sure. uh, for the the person who does not know where to begin, uh, what is the like top advice that you would give for someone who's just like I, I don't even know where to begin? Uh, Focus on very small areas to start. Okay. If you if you consider your whole house at once, you will get overwhelmed, and I've seen it happen. Um, start small. Start small. Focus on one closet at a time, one drawer at a time, and you'll build momentum, okay. and you'll start feeling better, and you'll keep going. All right, Adrian Scarborough, thanks so much for coming in this Thank morning. Thank you. Very useful. All right, we're back after this.